Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser and once again we are modelling for Advantage. Today we're going to talk about painting and building MDF Middle Eastern buildings which you may have seen in some of our Flames of War El Alamein stuff. I've got an example of one of the kits here. Um, if I was buying from scratch, this one is from Mango Terrain. It's on eBay. I think he might have an online store, but I picked these up on eBay. He doesn't have a great deal of variety, unfortunately, but these are probably the nicest of the kits that I've seen in terms of how easily they go together, how well machined they are in terms of the, feast, the pieces actually fitting one another. Um, yeah, really nice little kit. Even comes with little bits of, you know, masking tape holding it all together. I really like these. Although in the stills you're going to see kits from various places that I've used. Our objective in these videos is to show you quick, easy, simple methods of getting it onto the table, uh, but also not to burden you with unnecessary information. So, for example, you are not going to watch me gluing one of these kits together with PVA because I'm pretty sure if you're even watching this video that you know how to do that. So get the kits built, get them primed. You want to use a spray primer because MDF just soaks up paint, but paint sticks quite well to paint. Once you're at that stage, let's get onto the magical component, which is going to help give us that kind of rougher texture, which is going to bring these otherwise quite plain buildings to life. So this big pot of gloop here, this brown gunk, is made from a mixture of things. Essentially, that pot of gloop is a mixture of PVA, filler and cheap acrylic paint. Any of your scenery work, you still want to use acrylic paint so you can use your model paints if you need to, but you can get much cheaper quantities of it by using stuff like this. So by having this mixture of thinned out filler with paint in it and a little bit of PVA, it's both going to adhere very well to the surface, but it's also going to give us that texture and it's going to do it fairly. It's essentially a cheap textured paint, um, but it's not going to be made up of the equally sized grains of sand, for example, which is often a problem. It ends up looking a bit more like pebble dash rather than kind of roughly applied um, plaster work. So in the first instance, you want to coat the entire model. You probably need to hold it something like this in your fingers there so that um, you can actually get to all the surfaces. And your principal job on the, on, on the kind of first pass is to make sure that that kind of layer of plaster or filler is across the whole model. You um, are not so much painting it on though, you're more spackling it on. You want that, that plaster to cover unevenly and to create areas of texture so you can dry brush it over later. So after the first pass where you've had it quite thin and you've got something for it to stick to, you're going to go over them all again. This time you need to make sure that the product is quite thick in consistency because you don't want the water to kind of activate that which you've already got there. During this step, pay special attention to the edges where the MDF has been cut. They're going to be the worst for trying to get paint on. Um, so you can end up with some quite discoloured sections where the paint is cut. Sometimes you can use that to your advantage, but you want to just make sure in this stage that you're really getting some coverage on those or they're going to stand out in the finished product quite profoundly. So again, you're spackling it on, you're jabbing it with a brush that you really don't care about so that it's not just going on but it's spreading it about and you're going to get almost like waves and ripple type effects in the texture. So with that second application you've hopefully got quite an uneven surface to work from. If you're not happy with it consider doing it again but we are going to add paint over the top of this so don't worry too much certainly about the colour you're really more interested in the coverage and you don't want it you don't want it equal across you don't want it universal. So we go to our brown paint, um, I'm using the same brown paint that I'd mixed in with the filler but obviously it's a great deal darker uh, because it's not got anything diluting the pigment there. We're going to paint the entire models again all the way over uh, to get this really dark under colour from which we're going to build up. Don't worry too much about sort of dry brushing or over brushing here, you're really just trying to make it all dark brown. Two coats of that appeared and we're starting to look like we've got a funny shaped chocolate bar here, which is exactly what we want. 
So to try and get them to look a bit more authentic and a bit more natural when we're finished, we need some variation in colour. It's quite tempting at this, this point, you've got some texture on it, just to get a white or an off-white and just paint the whole thing. And if you want to, you can do that and you can let natural light and natural shadows do a lot of the work for you. But I like a little bit of discoloration in mine, so as you can see using a little bit of yellow. I'm applying this yellow in patches with rough, uneven strokes because the idea is to give us a mottled effect across them. And if you paint buildings in different batches, you'll find you do this in slightly different proportions and that's going to give them a little bit of individuality. What you'll tend to find is if you're doing like 20 of these at once, you're probably putting those yellow splodges in the same place, broadly speaking every time. I'm going to be paying attention to these top surfaces again because just in the natural process of that a lot of it isn't going to adhere so I make a special secondary effort to go over all of the cut edges with that yellow. And then we're just going to spackle on the white. We're going to do this with a much smaller brush and we're going to do it in a more controlled way. And you probably, if you want a really good effect, you want to use a few different off-whites rather than, I think here I've got white scar, which is pretty much white. Um, but you want to use it um, a bit like a spot highlight. You're not looking to make the whole thing white you're making you want in that really that yellow and brown to still show through and you're going to achieve this by the degree to which you dry brush the white on and then after that spot it on in a few places in corners or whatever um, away from the ground and it's just going to give you a little bit of tonal variation so you can see here that i've concentrated the uh, the white spackle at the top rather than at the bottom Probably something a lot of you already know, but it's worth reaffirming at this point how dry brushing works. Dry brushing works by taking a little bit of paint on your brush and then jabbing it into a, into a tissue, a paper towel, um, a bit of newspaper, but ideally a kitchen roll, which is like super thick toilet roll because it's very good at absorbing the moisture. What you're trying to do is leave some pigment on the bristles but not the fluid. So you jab the brush into the tissue and you work it round. And you want it to work into the bristles and further up so that you get an uneven application as you're going. And it's just leaving a little bit of pigment behind. Those cut edges, they're the bugbear of the project. But again, make sure you do them specifically rather than just more generally. So using my brush, I make sure I go to the corners, the edges and the window sills to make sure that my highlight colour, my white or my slightly off white that I'm using is hitting all of those edges, much like an edge highlight on a miniature or a dry brush on a miniature. But because you've got these big flat surfaces, you want your most extreme highlight on the hard edges. The last thing to think about is to start painting in some of the details on the models. Most of these have a combination of um, sort of roof hatches, doors and timber frames that, that st stick out as part of the structure of the roof. I have painted all of those in a pretty dark brown. I've used Games Workshop's Rhinox Hide. It's a very, very dark brown and that's because it's the, the kind of to cover up anything that may have been any of the white that's been left over from the various dry brushes that I've applied. We need to take back control of that surface so a dark colour with strong coverage is what you need. Pretty much done. The last step I just did, and you can see the finished product here, was to just go around and give a little bit of an edge highlight to those things with Mom Fang Brown. I did actually, with a small brush on these, run along the particular panels that are etched into the door to give it some texture. It isn't particularly necessary. I'm sure you could achieve a similar thing with uh, Agrax, but yeah, they're pretty much ready to go. There are other steps you could do. One of the things that I'm thinking about doing is putting some like Africa core decals or some building numbers on some of them that look like this particular settlement has had some military occupation. But pretty simple job. And when you get a, when you get a decent number of them on a nice desert board, it looks pretty good. These models are not beautiful and none of these techniques were very difficult, but I'm telling you that they are ready for the table. Thank you for watching.